I got a confession to make. I've never been a big fan of Mike Evans. You know the one with a thousand yards every season for the last 10 years? Now at least a few of y'all I'd imagine at one point or another was right there with me in a Mike Evans sleeper camp. But you probably trashed that old take and pressure washed your garbage can so there is zero evidence left behind. It's funny cause we love to dunk on analysts and commentators whose every single terrible take is publicly recorded. But we don't hold ourselves to these same standards and listen bro, I get why. But when it comes to sports commentators, I don't agree with the philosophy. Even my friends disagree with me on this by the way. I'm on the island and I'm happy to plant my flag and just stand on this mug, you feel me? But I don't like holding somebody to a higher standard than I hold myself specifically when I view us as equals. Example, I hold an NFL player to a higher standard than I hold myself to perform an NFL job. They get paid to perform and do that job well on a consistent basis. I cannot do that. So when it comes to playing football, I don't view us as equals. So in that arena, I hold them to a higher standard than I hold myself. But analysts and commentators don't get paid to be right. They get paid to get people to watch to get people talking. If you look at sports media over the last 20 years, this is obvious. It's not something that's hidden. It's in your face. So with me knowing that's the case, why would I hold their opinions above my own? Sometimes they say dumb stuff. Sometimes I say dumb stuff. Mike Evans has been a good player since he came into the league. So maybe you're wondering why I wasn't a fan early on. And you know what? That's too damn generous. Me saying early on, I didn't start appreciating Mike Evans to probably the last couple years. And maybe I'm alone in this, but have you ever had a player where you never at any point Point, thought he's not good but you still didn't like him and you ain't dislike him personally hell you don't know him but you just for whatever reason wasn't a fan of his game i believe everybody probably has at least one of these players and if you're ready to own up to it bro throw it in the comment section and what i want you to do is try to explain why you don't like him you might end up tying yourself in knots like i did with mike evans now i want to draw a distinction i never tweeted about mike evans i never made no goofy videos bashing a man or nothing if i'm not a fan of a player i usually just don't speak on them publicly because I don't like putting out negativity. I'd rather talk about somebody I do like. But the more closely I've watched, the more the dude has won me over. To the point where I wanted to make a video about him. But I just can't do that without coming completely clean. I can't just pretend I was a fan this entire damn time. There's a couple of reasons for my slumber when it comes to Mike Evans. Real quick, let me see how many I can list off the top of my head. As an AFC fan, I have legal NFC blindness. Where it's like I see the NFC, but sometimes I don't fully see it. I had him that year in fantasy see when he got shut down by Marsha and Lattimore twice and I was playing somebody I really wanted to beat when I tuned into the Bucks during that Super Bowl run I don't recall him going off through most of the playoffs have you ever fallen victim to like highlights of a player a player that's really not that good but they best plays are great I think that happened to me when it comes to Mike Evans in reverse so I was judging a man off his worst plays these are not things I'm proud of these are things that I actively try to avoid and I usually do but this this is one of them cases where I was unable to do that and it's kind of funny to me but I could learn a lot from it. I used to think Mike Evans was kind of overrated. Again I never thought he was bad I just thought he was overrated. I thought he was just a big receiver who got a high volume of targets and therefore was a stat monster who wasn't really as good as his game suggested. A lot of people would point to the fact well bro he played with Jameis Winston. I was like Jameis Winston will force you to ball a hundred times a game. So being the number one receiver in a Jameis Winston offense is not something I've ever viewed as a negative thing not statistically i know people love to joke about that 30 30 season but he threw 33 touchdowns and 5,000 yards as a receiver statistically how is this a bad thing you got a quarterback who's gonna give you chance after chance if he throws 100 picks he's still not gonna shy away so of course the receiver is gonna be productive with a quarterback like that but what I didn't realize was that, unfortunately for Mike, in that year he missed more games with injury than any other year in his career. But over the past five or six years, I've watched a lot of Mike Evans. I saw him with Jameis, Brady, and now I've seen him with Baker. Not to mention the other bridge quarterbacks and backup type guys that he's played with over the years, but he's always come through. And at some point I looked myself in the mirror and said, you have to appreciate his adaptability. He's been good in every scenario. And there's nuance to his approach and some dog in his game. And it slowly opened my eyes to realize what's in front of me. If there's one thing I respect in any craft, it's consistency. You can't say that and then say you don't like Mike Evans. Bro, that's a contradiction to the highest degree. 
and i just gotta call myself out on my own bs with that one then the way he's handled himself throughout his career clearly shows the type of maturity that i respect in players from my long hibernation to sleeping on the man to the shocking tragedy that took place when he was nine today we take a closer look at mike evans and how i went from not appreciating his game to becoming a fan Without further ado, man, y'all know what time it is. Cue the Wayne. We made it to the part of the NBA season where things get serious. And if the ball bounce your way, you can win some serious bread. I teamed up with DraftKings who have a brand new way to play. Daily Fantasy Sports with DraftKings Pick 6. Select two to six basketball players and choose if they're gonna have more or less of a certain stat. Track your lineup and compete against others for a chance to win some really huge cash prizes. All new customers get a 100% deposit match up to $100 in Pick 6 credits when you deposit just $5 or more. Get in on the action right now cause getting started is simple. Just download the DraftKings Pick 6 app and then sign up using code FLIMLO. The crown is yours. Now, as far as any one single year, he's only been a top five receiver in terms of yardage two times out of those 10 years. He's only been top 10 in less than half of those seasons. So he's never been arguably the best at any one time. That too might have played a factor in me sleeping on the dude. And it was never a point that you can argue he was the best in the game. He's one of those players it takes time to understand where his strengths truly lie. Analogy time. If the elite portion of Odell's career is a 100 yard dash sprinter, then Mike Evans' career is probably more like running a 400. I ran a 400, but my opinion doesn't matter here. Go ask real track athletes. Nobody wants to run the 400. That's because it's probably the hardest or one of the hardest races in track and field, point blank period. Then there are the shorter sprints. Although they require technical precision, massive amounts of power, and lead pretty much no room for error, they're simply over too quickly. These subject the athlete to a momentary blast, not a prolonged struggle. Enter the 400 meters. Technically, it's a long sprint, and practically, it's a theater of pain, even at the highest level. But his coach is trying to persuade him to try the 400 meters. I'm hoping not. Uh, well, I'm trying to discourage my coach from that, but... I'm one of those persons that don't really back from anything unless you're giving me a 400 and I don't want to run it. Your top speed is not the same as cats who run the shorter races, but you also can't cruise like the people that's running the longer races. You stuck in the middle running damn near full speed for way longer than the human body's engineered to do. Here's how long Mike Evans has been running at damn near full speed without stopping. When he first got close to the top 10 in his second year, out of all the players who were above him at the time, only three out of them 10 are still in the league today. And Mike's the only one who's better now than he was nine years ago. He running the whole race at the same speed and not slowing down. Now the clip I showed earlier is from a fire video about the 400 meter and how hard it is. You can find it on the Outperform YouTube channel and you can also find this comment in the comment section. Here's how a distance runner in the comment section described running the 400 for the first time. I went out fast next to the real 400 runners and the last 100 meters felt like I was running into a 40 mile per hour headwind. I could barely move forward. So how the hell is this dude still picking up speed? And he's not just a specialist, dude's a complete wide receiver. He catches the ball underneath, can use his size in the red zone. And he's not known for his speed, but he constantly makes big damn plays down the damn field. Not to mention, I turned a complete blind eye to his route running. He's definitely had some bad games, but he has some great ones as well, and he never seems to stay in a slump for too damn long. He averaged nine touchdowns a season while giving you a thousand yards every single year without fail. That's Pro Bowl production year in and year out. Do you understand the durability required for this stuff? I do regret all of the years that I slept on this dude. It's really not like me, but this is just one of them players I never mess with, bro. And since I had not been a fan, I never looked into his story. So imagine my surprise when I finally came across it. If you started this draft day and turned the clock back about 12 years, it'll bring you right to this street. For reasons that could be fully explored with a more thorough study, many Martin Luther King streets are sadly, unfortunately, often one of the most dangerous streets in a given city. 
Mike Evans grew up on one in Galveston, Texas. His dad, Michael Evans Sr., was described as a good dad. He put the ball in Mike's hands, gave him confidence as a kid. He taught Mike and his sister to have fun and compete at the same time. But there were some things going on that the kids didn't know about. While Mike Sr. was a good dad, he wasn't great to their mom. He would be real violent with her, and at times, it could get real bad. In 1998, when most of us was watching this, the record set in rookie season by one of the greatest receivers ever and one of only two other guys with 10 1,000 yard seasons. While we were watching his career bloom in 1998, a five-year-old Mike Evans watched his dad be sent off to prison. He was sentenced to three years for a felony assault. This time not on Mike's mom, but on a different woman. So while Mike's dad was in prison, Mike's uncle named Sam, and yeah, Uncle Sam, I get it, but this is not a funny story. But Sam was released from prison and came to live with his sister, Mike's mom, his nephew, and his niece. Mind you, this was after a 10-year bid in prison, so obviously he would have needed time to try to get back on his feet. Now, this arrangement worked fine until Mike Sr. got released, and now they're both out at the same damn time. Now check it out, whole time Uncle Sam was sitting in prison and he's hearing about what Mike Sr. has been putting his sister through. Nine times out of ten, brothers gonna be protective of their sisters. All the siblings out there, I'm sure you can attest to this. So unsurprisingly, Sam had a problem with Mike Sr. And for a while, he would mostly just try to avoid the dude. Sam tried to hold his feelings back, but it didn't take long before something happened that made those feelings bubble to the surface and overflow. Sam hears his sister crying from the other room she was drinking a beer and mike senior punched a can into her face this messed up her lip and now she's gonna need stitches sam sees red he runs to the kitchen and grabs two knives now somehow this situation would be de-escalated but it foreshadowed the situation that would happen shortly after and the next time bro it wouldn't be no de-escalation Mike Evans' recollection of the day that he'd ultimately lose his dad actually starts out as a really pleasant one. A game of catch with his dad, one of his fondest memories, but unfortunately also one of his final memories of his dad. When Mike went to sleep that night, he was awakened by the police and told he needed to go with them. Keep in mind, he's nine. Bro, who the hell knows what is going through the man's mind at the time? This is the type of stuff we wish no kids ever had to go through. Turns out that night, Mike and his dad was watching movies and eventually Mike Jr. fell asleep on the couch. Mike's mom had gone out. She's getting a break from the kids and her brother Sam at some point went to go meet her at the bar they was at. They out drinking, chilling, probably trying to decompress because sometimes life be on your head and you just need one of them nights. But after Mike Jr. falls asleep, Mike Sr. picks up the phone and he calls Mike's mom and asks her to come home early. She said, cool, you know what I'm saying? I guess it wasn't a big deal. Or at least it wasn't for her, but for Sam, it was different. Out of all the stuff Mike Sr. did, this was probably the least egregious. But I guess an accumulation of transgressions and an accumulation of alcohol would lead to an accumulation of stab wounds from Sam to Mike Sr. After the call sam hopped in the car bro speeds back to the house and when the police got there later they found mike senior in the street 27 stab wounds two bullet wounds so mike evans lost his dad that night at the hands of his uncle Uncle Sam is currently serving like 40 years in prison for the murder of Mike's father in front of his house. Mind you, in Mike's mind, he just had a great day with his dad. He was playing catch, he was watching movies. Then he wake up to this. Mind you, at the time, Mike didn't even know about the issues between his parents. So this whole situation is just completely out of the blue. And even if he did know about the situation, he's nine years old trying to process what just happened between his uncle and his dad. Now they're both gone. One's gone from this world. The other's gone from society. Now Mike, the man of the house at nine years old. How do you not go off the deep end and get stuck at that point in your life and turn to drugs or the streets or have your life completely derailed? As many videos as I've done on different players' lives, this is the type of inciting incident that usually derails things. And they was poor and just lost income, so I doubt they could afford therapy. But he somehow holds himself together, goes to Texas A&M, breaks records, then go to the league and play for 10 years. Never had a bad season, no off the field issues. The situation is much worse than a lot of these career troublemakers who lean too heavily on their past as an excuse for their behavior. And I get it bro, he's the exception. Everybody can't do this. But as far as the model you wanna follow, 
Mike Evans is that dude. Now, even before I knew his story, the fact that I wasn't a fan made me watch him more critically over the past several years. And the more I've really watched closely, the more I've been impressed with things I thought wasn't in his game that I now see it's in his game. So I've slowly come over to his side from sleeping on the dude to appreciating what he brings to a football field. And now that I know his story, my respect for him as a person is even higher than my newfound respect for his game. And that's what makes me a fan of a player. First, I gotta like your game, but it goes beyond just the feel. For me, I like the players that represent something deeper, that make me wanna be better at what it is I do. That's why I was such a Kobe fan. But listen, bro, when Mike Evans pushes for his 11 straight 1,000 yard season in 2024, a feat that would surpass Randy Moss and have him second behind only Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver to ever do it. Now, when it comes to consecutive seasons with a thousand yards or more, Jerry Rice also holds that record with 11. So if Mike does it again, he could tie that record. And if he does it two more times, he could break that record. But out of all of these players, bro, including Rice, nobody's ever done it every year of their career. Jerry Rice barely missed it during his rookie season, then went crazy and ripped off 11 in a row. So Mike Evans alone holds that distinction already. Like I said, bro, the model of consistency. And not consistently mediocre, consistently high level. Which is why I compared it to running the 400 meter. When Mike Evans make that push this year, I'll be joining this day one fans and whoever else draft the man in fantasy and pulling for the man to make it happen yet again, which would allow him to stand toe to toe with the greatest players to ever play the position. And I think that's what's up.